Welcome. My name is James Packman and I'm the Rector, the Senior Minister here at Holy Trinity Church in Nailsy and I'm delighted to welcome you to Sunday Catch Up. Sunday Catch Up is where we take the Bible reading and the talk from last Sunday but make it available on the internet to those who might be blessed and encouraged by it and I hope that you are. If you would like to be in contact with us, please do get in contact. The details are on our church website, uh, www.htnailsy.org.uk. Please let us know if you've got any questions or if there's any way in which we can help you at this time. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad you can. May God bless you today. The reading today is Philippians 4, verses 4 to 7, and can be found on page 1180 of the Church Bibles. Final Exhortations Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. It's not three points, but three phrases to begin with, taken from that reading. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious. Pray in every situation. The Lord is near, fact. Do not be anxious. Encouragement. Pray in every situation prescription. Now, the earth is round. Fact. The sun is somewhat hot. Fact. The Lord is near. Fact. We can therefore move on. Because that moves on immediately to saying that because the Lord is near, do not be anxious. So, okay, so the, don't worry, be happy. Bobby McFellin, 1988. On the other hand, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious. Paul, round about AD 60, and running right through to 2022, without variation in between. Do not be anxious can be sort of easily said. Because, well, sort of, some characters sort of just do become sort of naturally anxious. And there can be many a circumstance that you think, well, this, this warrants real anxiety. Things, if they're not what's going on in my home and family, what's going on nationally, things which are going on globally. Surely, if we love our neighbour, we ought to have anxiety. Well, no. That kind of situation isn't actually being anxious, that is genuine concern. There's a difference between concern and anxiety. Loving our neighbour will generate concerns at all sorts of levels. But the anxiety which is this kind of anxiety here. This is something about sort of fear. It's about doubt. It's about that 
feeling that somehow things can be out of control or that ultimately things depend on me to get them sorted. Neither of which is true. And the prescription is not pull yourself together, which is never a help, but be reassured, be reminded that the Lord is near. So pray, pray in every situation. And so if you pray and that gets it all sorted, right? Well, tall flagpole, two guys at the bottom looking up at it with puzzled expressions on their face. Class in the late 20s comes along, sort of sharp business suited, Gucci shoulder bag, and says, uh, you've got a problem, guys. Yeah, yeah, it's this, um, this, this flagpole. We've been told to get a sort of new rope for it, and we're trying to work out how tall it is. So she points out two bolts at the bottom. No reaction. She just slips the shoulder bag off and gets out a spanners and socket set, and unders loosens both bolts, and then takes one of them out. And then gradually, hand over hand, lowers it so that the top is now on the ground. That all right now, guys? No reaction. So she gets the steel tape out, sticks it at the foot. You hold here at the base, and she goes to the other end, comes back and said, it's 7.6 meters. It, it, it's just under 20 feet foot. 25 foot, all right? No reaction. So she packs it all in the bag and goes off. And one guy turns to the other and said, typical. We're trying to find out how tall it is. All she can do is tell us how long it is. <laughs> we may not recognize an answer if it doesn't come in the way we've already determined that it has to come. And in the things of God, and in the things about which we pray, that can equally be the case. <coughs> that in one sense we don't doubt the fact that God hears us, but we're expecting the resolution to come in ways that we've already determined. Rather than realising that perhaps it's laid out in front of us. Pray in all circumstances. So the focus of anxieties uh, come in sort of fears, they come in doubts, which are resonating and reverberating in sort of hearts and minds, which is exactly where Paul then moves on to by saying, look, you pray, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard what? Your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God to strengthen, to develop, to guard heart and mind. This is the substantial work of God. Encouraging us, therefore, to meet him in prayer. And expressing needs, thanking him for those things which recognize of already been happening, and every situation, realizing that we are part of that work in progress. In every situation, that whole spectrum of things from the personal through to the national, the global, in fact, increasingly these days, those things which we might have just thought were global problems are becoming national problems, and things which were national problems are becoming personal to people and finances and other sorts of ways that they weren't doing you know, perhaps a couple of decades ago. There's a whole spectrum of things which are our invitation to pray about. Things which are particular, things which are personal, things which are painful. And the every situation Praying in every situation, about every situation, is therefore much wider than just the personal 
things. For example, and this is where you can sort of do your homework later, but that reading which Gay gave us from Philippians chapter 4, the middle of it, look in your own time at the three or four verses which precede it and the three or four verses which follow it. Because the three or four verses which precede it are talking about one particular issue that Paul had had to address. When he said to the church in Philippi, you know, I know, we all know that there are a couple of folk there who are having all sorts of issues. And I plead, and I won't give them their names there, but I plead with X and I plead with Y to be of the same mind in the Lord. We have no idea what the disagreement was. It could have been something which had been generated from um, personality clashes. It could have been something in which these two people had just got very different views about a situation that should have arisen within the church and different ways of, of handling it. We don't know. But whether it was a personality clash or some major issue like that, those have been repeated through the centuries. Every century, virtually every church, has known the personality clashes, the different ways of sorting out issues. The personality clashes, that where two people who are, are to begin with, already sort of different in nature because under God we're all different in nature, but there's that sort of misunderstanding and things are said, situations get entrenched, sides are taken. The personality clash becomes a wider issue for the church. Or different views about how things should be resolved. And of course, um, over this last couple of weeks, James has been addressing that, the different issues. And sometimes when people are on different sides of things, they tend to reckon that somebody who's on the opposite side of the argument, well, they can't even be a Christian. Paul speaks to these two and said, urge you to be of the same mind in the Lord. And he goes on to say, because they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel. They were Christian believers. They were one with Paul. And yet they have somehow developed these different ways of going about things. Yes, they should have the mind of Christ. But then he goes on to try and encourage somebody else to act as the peacemaker. And I ask you, help these folk since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel. They're fellow workers. There is that role for the peacemaker as opposed to just a peacekeeper. But else does Paul add, let your gentleness be evident to all. Because when situations arise, be it of personality clashes or different views, gentleness is often the very first thing to go out of the window. And even if we're not the directly involved people, we tend sometimes then, perhaps, he has to be gentle with the ones who agree with us. But to those we disagree with, to get a bit dismissive, hard-hearted, judgmental, is that then why Paul, after the bit of reading that we had, goes on to say, Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, think about such things. Not just sort of sit there thinking nice thoughts. That never got anybody anywhere. You might have been aware in the last perhaps two or three weeks of one or two people whose conversations are broadcast on the television who tend not to be finding a common mind, um, and they're pointing out how different they are and how only they are right. Perhaps we could pray that the coming weeks 
would have an increasing number of people who look for what's true, what's noble, etc., etc. But that is what we need within the fellowship of the church. When there are differences, not to concentrate on the negative, but to look for those things which are praiseworthy. Some people can be placed in the position of pursuing a resolution, but all are called on to pray. To begin and to end, the start and the finish of all this is that the Lord is near. Which frighteningly might be 90% encouragement, but 10% warning. That when there's division, when there's sides being taken, the Lord's near. But mainly encouragement. In every situation, praying and perhaps taking action. We tend to narrow the field of God's concern, whereas really we ought to be widening ours. Like the young kid, he said, you know, God, please help mummy and look after Toby and look after the goldfish and God, please look after yourself, otherwise we're all sunk. How wide is our conception of the workings of God? In every situation, in every way, Yes, looking for those situations which warrant thanksgiving. Seeing those ways in which we're looking to God to resolve things, but to resolve them in a way of his choosing. Who would have thought the cross was God's way of resolving anything? And even those who might have been praying for God to work were not recognizing in the cross this is love and this is justice. This is my way of working. In the deep counsels of God, all situations ultimately resolved. But we're at that part where they, we're in the toing and the froing. We're, we're at the point where the waves are breaking on the seashore. The general thrust is clear. Individual bits are uncertain. We pray. And some things will be resolved in exactly the way we had been hoping for and praying for. Perhaps too specifically. God will resolve some in one way and some in another. He is not out of control. The Lord is near. And the one word in that reading which has not been touched on at all at the moment, rejoice. The Lord is near. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are always present, whether we are conscious of it or not. Encourage us by your presence to open up with those things which are of deepest concerns within our hearts. Help us to be opened to you and to look to you in confidence for your resolution in all things. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.